in association with the NBC Television Network. Yes, it's William Bendix in The Life of Riley. With Marjorie Reynolds as Peg, Tom DeAndre as Gillis, and Wes Morgan as Junior. Produced by Tom McKnight and directed by Abby Berlin. Wasting our time, Ryle. You can't find parts for a washing machine in a junkyard. Why not? That's where I'd work a washing machine. Come on, let's go. Chiquito, tenemos que trabajar. Come on. Come on. Stop. He already stopped. But I want him to walk. Don't you know this is be kind to animals weak? Every poor Blosky do this. You know, mister, I think his mother, she got scared by stop sign. You get more flies on sugar than fly paper. And I always carry some with me on be kind to animals weak. What's his name? Well, I, I call him Leo after my uncle. Leo. Here, Leo, that's a good boy. Here. Put it in your palm, Riley. You'll be riveting with your wrist. Moro, don't to be dog meat. Dog meat? A wise guy, he sent me the horse for 30 bucks yesterday. Today, he's not pulled the wagon. So tomorrow, he's going to the dog food factory. You can't do that. That ain't being kind to animals. It's got two sides, Ryle. It's being kind to dogs. <laughs> you like Leo, mister? I sell him cheap. Well, I, I don't want to buy him. I, I, I just want to save him from... Look at them eyes, Gillis. He's pleading with me. Look the other way. Look, Gillis, he, he's got tears in him. It's a cinder. Come on, Ryle. There he stands, Gillis. Today, a noble animal. Tomorrow, a pile of hamburger. <laughs> you touch my heart, mister. For you, $20. I should have seen it coming. <laughs> sugar. I run out of sugar at 5th and L. We've been two hours coming from that junkyard. I got a kid I'd like to see before he's old enough to shave. You know what's wrong with Leo Gillis? Yeah, we got him. We gotta figure out some kindly way to make him move. We can light a fire under him. There, you see, he wouldn't like it. No, we'll take him to your house and put him in your garage. He don't set a hoof in my garage. Honey, be it murder me. You got an interest in Leo Gillis. Look, just because you nicked me for 10 bucks don't mean I have to be interested in him. All right, then I'll take him to my house and he can be a guest in my house until I find a good home for him. Peg ain't got a guest room for a horse. What's she gonna eat? I'm the boss in my house. What I say goes. And I'll lay a tree to one. It's Leo that goes. Oh, yeah? Yeah. <laughs> what do you guys think you're doing? We got a horse. No. <laughs> it's so. I thought I was gonna have to sweat that out of you. We're trying to get him home. Oh, I see. And just for a lock, you glued him to the sidewalk. No, he's got a complex about moving. So have I. So get him out of here! Yes. And hurry up! He understood, Gillis. He's ready to go. Climb on. Not me. It's your turn to get the calluses. Okay, here, hold on. <laughs> Give me a boost up. Mom, it's 6.30 and I've got a date at 7. We'll give your father five more minutes. Hey, Mom, do you have any old bones around the house? Only mine. Why? Well, you see, it's be kind of animals week. And, well, I thought... 
Junior, we go through this every year. You can't feed all the stray dogs in the neighborhood. Oh, this isn't a stray dog. She belongs to Pinky Sweetser. Well, then let Pinky feed her. He can't. He's going away with his folks over the weekend. You didn't bring that dog of Pinky's over here, did you? Sure. She's on the service porch. What? She's a swell dog, Mom. There's all kinds of tricks around the house. Mm, I bet. Just where do you see her? You fall in love with her. Junior, last year it took us a month to get rid of those kittens Dad brought home. She is, Mom. Her name is Speedy. <laughs> Come on, Speedy. Sit up. Come on, girl. Big. <laughs> She'd make a great sign for mortuary. She's plenty lively. You ought to see her chasing rabbits. Well, we haven't any rabbits around the house as yet. So take her back where she belongs. But, Mom, I promised Pinky I'd take care of her over the weekend. I'm sorry, Junior, but you should ask me before you make promises. Mom's bridge club's meeting here Saturday, and she doesn't want a mangy old dog wandering around. She's better looking than most of those women in the bridge club. <laughs> That'll do, Junior. Now tie her outside and wash up for dinner. You can feed her and take her back afterwards. Ah, oh, yeah. here. Come on, Speedy. <laughs> I don't understand why Leo wouldn't go in a garage. There's a car in there. They're natural enemies. If I leave him out here, Peg will see him. She's got to see him sooner or later. This is no gopher you're trying to hide. <laughs> climb up out here and go in and break it to her gently. I better go home to Honey Bee or she'll break something over my head and it won't be gently. I'll see you in Citation in the morning. <laughs> about your father. Something must have happened to keep him. I'm worried about Speedy. Where's he gonna stay over the weekend? I'm worried about making the early movie. Curtis will be here any minute. Well, let's all stop worrying and have our dinner. Hi, everybody. Oh, oh hi, you hi, fine, Riley. Well, I see you started dinner without me, huh? That's a fine way to treat the guy who buys the groceries. <laughs> uh, what's my dumpling been doing? Oh, worrying about you. Where on earth have you been? Oh, I, I was out with Gillis, horsing around. I mean, uh, <laughs> uh, how's my little badgie? Uh, all dressed up, I see. Uh, going someplace? Yeah, if we ever finish dinner. I'll get your plate. <laughs> uh, what about you, Junior? Did you do a good deed today for some defenseless animal? Yeah, I brought home Speedy. Mom would let me keep her in the house. You brought home an animal? He brought home Pinky Sweetser's dog, and I'm not going to have her lying all around the furniture. Oh, yeah, your mother's right, Junior. Never bring home nothing small enough to lie on the furniture. <laughs> Here you are, Dave. It's nice and hot. Oh, boy, my favorite dinner. You kids are lucky to have a mother who can cook like this. Oh, uh, what is it? Well, nothing to get that worked up about. <laughs> Just yesterday's pot roast warmed over. Yeah, but the way your mother warms it. There ain't another woman I know, Dumplin', can warm up like you can warm up. Say, a strong wind must have come up, Mother. I noticed the laundry slipping round and round. <laughs> I better get it in. No, no, don't get up, Peg. I, I, I'll bring it in after supper. I, I feel like doing a little outside work. My, you are in a good humor tonight. Yeah, I feel good, Peg. Today I saved a noble animal from being ate up by dogs. Gee, Clock, were they attacking him? Well, not exactly, Junior. He hadn't been processed yet. Huh? I, I was walking along today when suddenly there was Leo. There was who? Well, you see, Peg, there was this pitiful specimen of man's inhumanity. This four-footed flotsam, alone and friendless. No family to come home to. No wife to soothe his aching head. No son to take off his shoes. No warmed over pot roast waiting for him in the stove. <laughs> Nothing to look forward to but being a pot roast himself. <laughs> I tell you, Peg, it was heart rendering. 
Riley, you haven't brought home any dogs or cats or crippled ducks again. I, I give you my word, I did not bring home a dog, a cat, or a duck. What did you bring home? <laughs> well, you see, Babsy, that was this pitiful specimen. We've all heard about the pitiful specimen. What became of him? <laughs> <laughs> Riley, what was that? Uh, that was me, Peg. I, I just thought of a funny joke. You see, there was these two Irishmen. It sounded like a horse. You've been going to too many of those Western moving pictures, Jim. <laughs> Better in the sky. It's be kind to animals, weak peg, so you could at least speak to me. I'll speak to you when you get rid of that horse. You can't just throw Leo out like he was a relative. Twenty dollars that we could use, thrown away on a broken down horse. Junior could learn to ride him. Maybe become a jockey. We could stunt his growth. Have you seen what Leo did to the fence last night? He kicked out a couple of planks. Don't make mountains out of moleskins. I'll nail him back again. We're not going to keep him. We most certainly are not. Your father's going to get rid of him this morning. But, Peggy, it'll break his heart. Well, he's broken my clothes pole, trampled the flower beds, and knocked down the fence. So we're even. I know. My brother-in-law, Marty Dipsel, he spends all his time at the racetrack. He should know what to do with a horse. Well, Riley, I don't care what you do, but do something. I'll call Marty right now. I left a message for Marty. He should be here soon. Just because you gotta get a horse, I gotta get a mouse. That honeybee is awful headstrong. Peg hadn't have held her, she'd have killed me. Serves you right. Leo butted down the fence and ate up five hours worth of her petunias. <laughs> Next year, Lyle, just be kind to your neighbors. It's awful quiet around here. Where is Honeybee? The last time I saw her, she was chasing a horse. If she catches him, your troubles are over. <laughs> Hi, boys. Hi, Thipps. Hi, Marty. Sissy Pyle laid your message from Grogan's Cocktail Palace to Feeney's Buy on Grill, so I come right over. If you boys want a horse. We got a horse. Well, there's a little filly running a tropical park that'll get you seven to one. There's some fillets running around this backyard that'll get you in the city hospital. Quit clowning, boys. This is my busy time. If you want to lay a bed, I'll take care of it. Just tell Honest Marty, the guy horses talk to. <laughs> I'm going on the wagon, boys. It's all over. I'm seeing horses. No, he's real. He belongs to me and Gillis. I'm disowning him. You can have both ends. That's a real horse. Well, he ain't on no merry-go-round. You've got to help me, Marty. i got to get rid of him. Where'd you get him? Riley picked him up from a junk dealer. Oh, they'll stick you every time. Peg ain't talking to me. Honeybee's on the warpath. i got to find him a good home. Wait a minute, boys. Maybe you got something here. Just look at those fentlocks on it. Yeah, well, he can brush them off with his tail. Just like sea biscuits. And look at them withers. Men of war. And them spavanees. Citation. <laughs> you got a double saw buck, Riley? I ain't betting on no horses, Marty. Who said anything about betting on them? For 20 clams, I can get you Manny H. Fishblow. That sounds like a bargain. Who is Manny H. Fishblow? Best horse trainer in the state. Got a big training farm out in Encino. In three weeks, he can have that pluck, <laughs> that thoroughbred in shape for the derby. You mean race him? Oh, man, he's a pal of mine. He'll take him out to the farm, bring out his points, and you enter him as a sleeper. Nah, he, he don't sleep. Nights is when he does his best work. Uh, just leave it to me. Have the 20 up, and I'll be back with Manny. Ha <laughs> ha, you boys are in the money. Give us. I own a racehorse. Just the front. I'm taking my half back. Stop kissing me. You sure 
you got a damn pet now, Doc? Dr. Emmanuel H. Fishblow is as reliable as Gibraltar. Perhaps another libation would embed it deeper in my memory. Ah, you can get fried when we get to 20. Come on. Just remember, you're a horse trainer. Well, what do you think, Doc? Is he another sea biscuit? The horse on the right has possibilities, but the one on the left is hopeless. <laughs> what do you say? Uh, it's all right, Riley. He's been looking at them three-dimensional pictures. Uh, you can have them ready for the Gold Cup, can't you, Doc? Well, of course, massage, bone manipulation, hydrotherapy. I guarantee another Dan Patch. Dan Patch was a trotting horse. I'm not responsible for how he wins as long as he wins. Yeah, that's all we want. You'll be kind to Leo, won't you, Doc? I will lavish all the affection of a mother on him. <laughs> Come on, boy. Get up. Hey, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Not my fault. Not me. Him. Oh. <coughs> Come on. Ollie's, pickles, mayonnaise. Can you think of anything I've missed? No. You seem to have everything. Hmm. Well, this is the last bridge party of the season. I want it to be perfect. I got the car out of the garage for you, Peg. Oh, thanks, dear. Riley, did you get the horse off our property? Yeah, Marty took care of it. Have I got a surprise for you? Surprise? We're going to be eating strawberries and cream in January. Riley, don't tell me you traded the horse for a cow. For your information, Mrs. Riley, they ain't running cows in the derby. <laughs> What's he feeding them, squab on their glass? Well, them racing horses have to have special delectables. Bandages, tree bucks, liniment, 18 bucks. Maybe he's spraying it on them. <laughs> Exercising, four bucks. Blood transfusion, six bucks. Well, that's cheap. <laughs> Blood transfusion? <laughs> we ain't got a horse, we got a vampire. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> <laughs> Big training farm, Marty said. What do they train here, termites? <laughs> Maybe they got a special place for horses. Let's look in the window. <laughs> no wonder that horse liniment costs so much. It's a hundred proof. <laughs> That's Leo. I'd know his voice anywhere. Come on. There he is, Gillis. Don't he look in the pink? With six bucks with a transfused blood, he should look pink. Hey, you look good, Leo. Come on, let's case the joint. No, you go ahead. I'll stay here and talk to Leo. When I get back, let me know what he said. I will. <laughs> Leo, someday you're going to be famous. They'll build a statue of you out at the track. I can see it all now. The crowds yelling, the bands playing. Everybody up on their feet as your jockey starts climbing up on your back.
Kyle, this is for the horses. If you want to get a drink of water, get it over at the pump. Help me out. What happened? Junior won the derby. And you swum the channel. <laughs> Come on, you're all wet. Is everything all ready, Marie? Yes, um, I had to squeeze on the chicken salad a little bit, but I stretched it out with pickles and olives. <laughs> Fine. Now, this is the last rubber, so when I call you, you bring in the first prize. Yes. Is this the gym crack here? Mm hmm Now, be very careful not to drop it. Oh, I ain't to drop in type. <laughs> and then you can serve the refreshments. You know, I had to give Junior a big dish of ice cream just to get him out of here. Hi, Junior. Hi, Pop. Jeepers, what happened to you? It came up foggy out in the valley. I gotta change my clothes. Hey, wait a minute. You can't go in that way. Why not? I live here, don't I? The living room jammeth women. Mama throw a fit. I can't catch pneumonia because she's giving a hen party. My window's open. You can climb in. So long, Pop. Winner of the Derby's got to climb in his own window. <laughs> Take it easy. Quiet. Shh. Quiet. Quiet, Ah, oh, she bit me! Quiet, girl. Please, quiet. The winner of the first prize of this meeting of the Blue View Bridge Club, with seven rubbers and an aggregate of 2,000 points, is our secretary and treasurer, Honey Bee Gillis. <laughs> I hope she finds it useful and decorative in her home. <laughs> All right, Marie. Oh, Riley. <laughs> are you alone? Well, sure I'm alone. Who are you expecting, Gregory Peck? Of course not. Where's Leo? I sold Leo to the Blue View Riding Club. I got my money back, and Leo is living in luxury. There's the ten I borrowed from Gillis. Oh, and, and this twenty is... to pay for the damages that Leo did. Nothing for cigars? Well, you can't expect two luxuries in one week. You had Leo. He was just a poor little mixed-up horse. Yeah, and he certainly mixed up things around here, all right. Well, it's all over now. Oh, and when Junior's friend gets back, we can get rid of Speedy. Yeah, where is Speedy? Curled up on the foot of Junior's bed. Uh, <laughs> well, that's kind of cute, you know. Boy and a dog, they sort of go together. Yes, I suppose in a way they do. You know, someday I'm going to buy Junior a dog all his own. Well, I'll tell you when, and I'll pick him out. <laughs> You're not going to wake up Junior and ball him out, are you? No. I've got a crazy husband and a crazy son. I guess I'll just have to live with them. Ah. Ah, Peg, you're wonderful the way you understand us. <laughs> I think I want to kiss you like I used to back in the old days. <laughs> oh, Riley, stop it. This is no place to make love. The Gillises will see it. I don't care about the Gillises. I'm going to get... Leo! Riley, you lied to me. You told me you sold that horse. Well, I, I did sell him, Peg. I swear I did. Well, then why did he come back? Well, I, I guess it's just one explanation, Peg. You fell in love with me. And what's good enough for you is good enough for a horse. <laughs> Oh, 